Roscoe from Slave Pit. How you doing, man? Hell yeah, my brother. Fucking good, fucking amazing, and working on the new piece of shit. I mean, new track. <laughs> there you go, man. It's fucking A. So, so yep. tell, us, tell us all about it, dude. Uh, well, I'm from the small country called Macedonia. So, you know, the story of the country of the Alex of the Macedonian, or Alex the Great, we can say that, but... Now I'm leaving Germany. Uh, before start my band, I live in Sofia, in Bulgaria, 10 years, almost 11. And as you know, we always try to find a better place for living. So because in the United States, sometimes people can live and work with the music, but in the Balkans, you know, you need to work hard to record your stuff. And that's it, now I'm in Germany. So also I can say I'm happy to be in your program because I have seen many faces like the last interview with mighty James Murphy. I love that guy. So I can say one secret now because I haven't told you, but James Murphy should be our guest in one of the last album song as a solo guest. But the problem comes by uh, I don't want to say the name, but, you know, we have uh, labels and that stuff. And, you know, there was a lot of uh, games and we speak with the James. So I wait James to come on this album with one of the solos. So I, for me, it's proud to say I have you in one of my song. So I pretty sure you will join in the another one where we speak so for me for me to to say like a musician from my bottom of the soul i, I love to play you know just rhythm riffs and that stuff so as a kid uh we have heroes you know one of the modern uh, hero for me as a shredder god it's you so i don't want to say you know it's there is a multiple guys where you can learn a lot of techniques. You know, one of them is uh, the most famous uh, YouTuber Bernd from the Austria with the Q Stack band. So that's it. So we learn playing guitar, you know, in the basement. So for the music style, we have the same. So we all grew up with that testament obituary especially i grew up with the miami death metal scene you know d site and malon creation i think they're from the miami too if i'm not wrong i think they're from tampa but you're absolutely right dude and yeah they, tampa, tampa yeah. florida yeah that's what i want to say yeah so this yeah. is the this is the what kind of taste of music we have and uh, I also learned by the years, and uh, I want to change uh, the music in the technical trash that I can explain. I can't explain exactly what I want, but it's combination, you know, because I have never used drop in my life. So for the first time, I made a drop song. Yeah, but this is what is it we need to find a new way how to make a stuff and that so how you decide uh, to work on this podcast so how you get the idea to start your own broadcast for to speak with musician like famous one um i don't know i just thought it was cool like i mean i like talking to people and i am fortunate enough to know talented folks like yourself and everybody else and uh you know i figured um i mean we talk about stuff all the time for fun so like why not just like put it out there for other people to enjoy and you know and uh i figured that uh you know we we have no problem talking about music it's something that we all love and uh you know it brings people together so I, that's kind of what my uh, idea was and i figured you know i've got the, the most famous motto from the overkill in union we stand you know 
<laughs> there you go. And I have to say thank you, dude, for the for the kind words. And I'm you know, I really super am appreciative that you had me participate on one of your songs. I appreciate it. And it turned out really cool. And uh funny story about that. Uh I, when you guys sent me the demo and it the the lead that I recorded was at a time with the music initially. I thought what was going on, but it was you you got the best better of me on that one when I heard the final product, and you guys had kept it a secret that you uh had uh, had changed it, which is cool, but that was funny, man. I was like, "What is what is going on here?" Yeah, I leave I leave that to make the the producer, you know, because uh, Galen is fucking amazing guy. I love him, I respect him, and he say, "What you think to move just little up or like this?" Because you know now the music it's completely like you know the solo starts and it's boom, you know. So he do that, not me. <laughs> Turned out good, man. It turned out good. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, really very happy. So the song kids for now, 13,000 people, they have seen it. So this is for the first time in my life to have uh, so much views, you know. I expect for one year we will have maybe 50,000, who knows. And uh, about the new type of the music, in the past, you know, especially in the country small like Macedonia there was a two or three studios where if you want to record an album you need to sell your kidney to record it because there was no studios uh, and if you want you need to pay something where it's not exist so only the rich man can afford that and you know for that we was like can you imagine it? In 10 years, we have hundreds of shows and we still don't have even recorded single because that was, how to say, true for us because we was uh, kids. So when you're a kid, you're poor, no work. Our family was uh, really, really poor, poor guys because that was the the mentality the society in this time so you know the few people have the wall cake and if you get just a little we'll be okay if you don't how we say have fun and all good and there was a time you know to move uh, of course uh the time has changed the instruments uh, come cheap how to say yeah it's really cheap because if you work you can afford now i have so in my life in the past i can afford like 200 dollars guitar now i have 5000 so now the time is changed you know you can afford it you can buy it and uh, the music now it's easy now we all have home studios you know now it's completely easy even i don't need studio i can produce the music with my phone if i have ideas i can record the, the ideas with the phone but in that time we don't have phones so we have the old ones you know siemens nokia <laughs> and that was the the maybe for us was good because we start to respect the way of the money because if you don't feel that stuff you will never be com complete as a person because uh, if I wait money from my dad or from my mom, I will never know or learn how much money I need to spend or work to have, you know. And that was always the lessons where hit us, if I say hard, will be very easy. So as the Talona said, it's not work how hit you can hit, you know, how hard you can hit, but how how hard you can get hit so that was the, the real explanation for the situation and now the playing music it's fucking easy because now i don't use it but now we have a uh, guitar tab uh you have online uh, modern shredders where you can pay money they can explain how to write the notes and blah 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 and blah blah, blah. but in my time we don't have pc so we have one tape and you put in the tape and you know stop then you turn the tape 
with the staff. So that was our way how to learn the, the music. And it's easy now. You can use thousands of plugins. Uh, so even the, the worst guitar player uh, can start shredding, you know? Because uh, if you put so much plugins, nobody can understand your mistakes or that stuff. So for that first time when I saw your songs, I think was two years ago. I don't remember in which, in which group Facebook was, but uh, I know somehow I saw your music and also your uh, cover of the D side. So that was how I learned about you. And then the second song where I found and where I meet you was uh, you. I think you was guest in the Ring of Saturn, or I'm wrong. Yeah, I uh, toured with Rings of Saturn, and we and I. There's a video of us playing live. They asked me to play with them, and I was like, absolutely, dude. So it was cool they did that. So yeah, there's a video of me playing live with them um, uh, at the last show that we played in Austin, Texas, on the tour that mm -hmm. I did, did with them. Yeah, it was really cool, man. And I appreciate you checking that stuff out. And uh, this was how I learned the training. And then, you know, we meet each other. We start speaking. I ask you, do you want to participate in one of the songs? You say, and this is our friendship. I can say more than friendship. I can call brotherhood because if we help each other, nobody can stop us. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, and you're from the other side of the world and, you know, I'm in, in the in the in the western part of the United States, and like you said, with technology, anything's possible. And I mean, and you brought up a really cool, a cool, interesting point. Like, I mean, when we started, you know, I, we were lucky to have like VHS cassettes, you know, like videotapes and stuff like that. There wasn't YouTube. Like, you had to, like you're saying, sit down and like listen and all that ear yes, training. Yes, yes. Where where I grew up, uh, we grew up with the band camp. I think in that time, uh, you can only have band camp. That was the the real stuff, uh, and of course you buy tapes. So I still keep tapes and CDs because I more prefer tapes because the sound was more uh, raw, you know, for me. Because the CDs, uh, yeah, there was a revolution of the CDs, but somehow. When you put the music from the CDs, it sound uh, sound very different. So you have uh, one press from the tape and one press from the CDs, and there is a difference. And I can imagine it if you have vinyls, let's say. Oh yeah, like the difference between a rec all those uh, physical copies, like the CDs, the cassettes, to the vinyl. You know, vinyl to me does sound better. Like it has a little more like. I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but in my brain, I feel that it has a little more like dimension to the sound, like depth. And it's obviously that people say it's warmer and this and that, but I genuinely believe those things are, are, are accurate. Like a CD sounds pretty stale and a tape, you know, a tape is more durable than a CD too. So it's, it's kind of uh, cool to, you know, uh, see that. In my time, the vinyls was a little old than me. So I didn't uh, catch that time, you know. Uh, right. Some of my friends still have thousands of the vinyls, you know, first press where now it's uh, fucking expensive if you want to sell that stuff. But in that time, they told me, for me, it's fairy tales and stories because I was so young, you know, to know that. And they say uh, the real sound comes by the vinyls, but everything uh, now it's... Uh, new world order where it cannot be compared but it's still something so now you see uh for five minutes you record two guitars drums you have programmed and you have one song you know you have uh done equalizer and done stuff so you master and produce one song for half an hour yeah but it's they don't have the spirit you know because when you play the real guitar you know where everything's go in one room. So this is what we want to do with my drama now in uh, March. So I will go back in Bulgaria because my drama still live there. And we want to go in the studio to produce uh, the last four songs of the album. We want to produce in one day. 
and in one uh, room, you know, everything will be played uh, like the old school fashion way, Slayer, that, you know, where was no metronome, no clicks, no nothing, just restart and one take. So for yeah. now we practice fucking a lot. And to be honest, I want to make the next album in that way. Like I say this uh, certain that song or uh Morbid Angel Altar of Madness because I have a lot of inspiration for that. We we called our album Altar of Madness in the Tomb of Pain. So yeah, the one people ask us uh, why you choose Altar of Madness because you know I am a Satanist. I don't hide that, and we all where we love that religion ship. I don't know to say religion ship uh, for us it's like fantasy, but you know we all have altars, and uh, I am crazy all my life, and everybody always say the madness come you know they call me madness actually and i say okay this is my old roof madness you know and it was spontaneous because uh tomb of pain it's uh, egypt mythology because uh, i grew up uh, with that i also study that also i have my nile cover here and i decide to make the album in that way old roof madness in the to in the tomb of pain but that in it was somehow not acceptable and we decided to be like two parts you know old of madness tomb of pain something sure, like man. that and this is it and we want to make the music in the old school way because a lot of the metalheads where i have speak from the world stars of course because maybe we are so small band but i have so much connections about my metal madness promotions you know and I have a chance to sit with many, many metal face. One of them, it's Alexi Lino, rest in peace. So these days was uh, his memory. And we always speak with uh, them. And you know, the music industry has turned a lot, changed. And I'm not afraid to say everything is now pay to play. So there is no more money from that business i don't want to say the big name it's from the germany and it's maybe in the top four in the germany his band he also say i can tell you one truth where the people hide so we ask uh, for the show fifty thousand euro or dollars and then when you share the amount of the percentage you know because here in germany even the air where you breathe you pay so you know it's europe and first they take like five or ten thousand depends how the tax it's go for the money and then they you start you need to find the bus or truck because we are big band we have two or three trucks so and the end of the day, our show for that one hour or one hour and a half, it's not more than 2,000 euro per member in the band. So can you imagine it? They take 15,000 and the end of the day from the show, they all have one and a half or max 2,000. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, I was over there in your neck of the woods this last summer with Possessed. and Yeah, yeah it was. Uh, the problem yeah. was I have uh, my surgery on my feet and I was that month in the hospital, three weeks. So I haven't planned to go check one of the shows because I want to meet you. And then when I go out from the hospital, I just go to play in the Terminator, uh, where I was uh, in Slovenia. And then I come back and I go another time in hospital for another surgery man well it's i'm glad to hear that it all worked out though for you dude that you're feeling better and your feet are good and everything's going good and you know and uh, i i can say one thing i win the debt three times or four to now 
but it's just not uh, the the winning the battle you know you just continue for the next time but this is what is it is so we survive a lot of shit, uh especially me i have survived two wars uh one was in the yugoslavia we, uh, between the USA and Yugoslavia no but it's a uh, it's a political shit it's uh, part of the situation and 2001 we have another war in Macedonia and you know there was a uh, tons of bombs you know so where how the times go the consequences we always will feeling me or my son or you know and everywhere is the war everywhere the the air because the government kill us so we have seen how many times the flies you know and the shit and next day you you have 42 fever degrees you're shaking you know it's not normal but this is the society you know some people are born some people need to be dead so this is we cannot change and this is it you know so i'm happy to be alive or i can say i was lucky to be here in germany because if i was down somewhere bulgaria or macedonia that will be game over yeah i mean as i traveled through the balkans because we started in bucharest and romania and went down yeah so you passed and you see what kind of disaster is that oh yeah man like and it's um I mean, uh, you know, I'm fortunate as an American to live here. You're fortunate to be living in Germany and things can definitely be worse. And you've experienced and talked, touched on some of those things. And like, uh, you know, like with Yugoslavia dissolved, you know, and uh, everybody went their separate ways. It seemed like everybody got along. But once that country dissolved, everybody did not get along. And I'm sure you know better than any of that. I could ever, you know, say anything about it. But, you know, going through Bulgaria, you know, uh, was an interesting place. Eastern Europe's really, really interesting. And like when we would go through the border checkpoints between like Serbia and Slovakia and every and then into Croatia, it was it was definitely you could feel that there was a sense of uh sense of tension in the air for sure. What that uh yeah, bro, it's uh always because you know the Yugoslavia was uh the third world power in that time. Uh, and there was a, a lot of countries and the problem was here on the Balkans uh, how to say uh, everybody hates everyone uh, if I if I use you know the nationality or the political shits like uh, half of my friends use it to, till now I should need to stay in my room in Macedonia and I'll never move or do something. Because, uh, of course, what is patriotic? To love your country and serve your country. This is my uh, views on that. But to the other people that are the viewing, and now what is next? I'm forced to hate you because you're my enemy. So are we being in war no so who was in the world even my grandmother and your grandfather or grandmother it doesn't matter was not in the war right yeah so what how so what so you want to bring back uh 100 years old history to to start hate each other again why the past is past the war is war it's over so there is no sense but there is a victims yes there was a victims we have a victims they have a victims so what leave the victims to rest and that's it and also the problem comes in the metal music man uh i can tell you uh the bulgarians hate hates when they first time listen this when i was in the podcast because also the macedonians the serbians are different because I'm brother with them. Maybe for that we don't have problems. But uh, what is the sense to use old history in the metal music? So we're we're metalheads. For us, 
it's no history, no hate, no discrimination, no organization. We are freedom, we love music, and we love to live our way. So for me, the only one God is the metal music and religion. I don't see here hate, but the people where they have patriotic uh, feelings or they have uh, this I want to say because this is very funny. So in my family, we have a lot of soldiers. So my grand grandfather, they make uh, organization against uh, the other countries. You know, there was a uh, uh, soldiers and now I am just come in the moment. I need to speak with some guy who have never in his life uh, get a knife in the hand, not even to have like uh, soldiers or, you know, in the past or heroes. And that guy start explaining to you how he's patriotic and you're not, you know. And from your family, you have dead people who serve the country, defend the country, and they have died with the Medal of Honors and they don't have nothing in the life and that guy will tell you will tell you the story for how you need to love your country and protect your country and he will not even go in the army too so is there any sense to speak anymore for that type no but the problem is 90 percent everyone is the same macedonian and bulgarian we're similar yeah maybe we're not the same but we're similar the the similarity comes by mm, one century ago where we have organization uh, Vomero and they there was a half Macedonian half Bulgarian and they work for the case of the both countries they make Linden one uh, fight against the Turks and this is the similarity you know and the language is similar and you know there is a, a lot of stuff and now uh one patriot from macedonia wants to kill the bulgarian patriot and the same so it's somehow like uh, two brothers try to kill each other and this is the story like you say you pass the border and you have the two border you know the bulgarian and serbian and macedonian bulgarian and you feel the attention how when you leave the bulgaria how the macedonian will uh, uh where you go or where you go into serbia what you do in Bulgaria. So why the fuck I need to tell you what I do in the Bulgaria? So you see instruments. Do you know what's happened one time? We go first time to play in Serbia. Okay, and we go. And the border, when we pass, they try to, I, I think they will ask us to pull the pants down and they start fuck us. I say, what the fuck you doing? open your open your instruments okay i open the instrument you know it's guitar it's drums it's bass the guy just go and say no no they have uh, drugs inside give me the the stuff screwdriver to open i say how you can open my guitar inside man it's a wood the guy start to open my guitar brother so i saw and i say okay take this guitar and bring it home i it don't need no we need to check for what and after that, everything was settled down because I speak Serbian, I speak Bulgarian, I speak Macedonian, Slovenian, and I explained. And there was a one guy who goes out. It was wrong body, not metal. But say, can you feel the old history between the hate between the countries still exist? I say, yeah, I saw this. And when we go back, uh, because we go the next day, we sleep short and... Uh, the police officer work there 12 hours or 24 hours depends uh, how they want to work because i don't know how is the united states but seen but macedonian or bulgarian you can work 24 hours and then you're free three days or you can work 12 hours and then you're free day and half no idea how they can do that but it's only in the army you know and we go back the same guy was still there and we go and i say would you want to check again our equipment because you know and he just like lucas 
evil, you know. And I say, I know you're a musician. I am the metalhead. I have metal band, but I hate you because you're Bulgarian. And I say, sorry, Baba, I'm from Macedonia. And I say, fuck you, I'm Serbian. You know? He said, why you don't tell me this when you pass? We are Yugoslavia. I say, no, we're not Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia don't exist anymore. Now you're Serbian. I'm Macedonian, but I live in Bulgaria. The problem is there is always two type of people. He say, how you mean? Yes. You mean religion or nation? No, no, two type of people. So what do you want to say? I want to say, or you're good or you're asshole. Third option is not. So have fun. That was the first time when we go. And after that, of course, we do tours. But, you know, the first time when you pass, it's terrible. Or uh, the worst enemy you can have in the Balkans is the Greeks. If you go to play uh, in Greece, and if you not play the first show in Greece, you travel by Serbia or Macedonia, then you're completely fucked up. Yes, they they do tons tons of shit, you know. Why you don't have this? They ask you some papers where it's not exist, you know. Yeah, like uh, if you because there is a on the Balkans, Bulgaria and Greece are in the Europe nation, also Bucharest. But when you go to play in Bulgaria, Bulgaria will never ask you for Atacarnet or the Romanians. Because they know all bands travel, it's it's no sense to ask 100 euro per band. So that documents it's 100 euro. And when you pass between dead borders, uh, we have cancelled show. Uh, the Greeks uh, made a problem twice to Marduk. Marduk, uh, yeah, my friend was uh, owner of the show. He was the organizer, and. Uh, Marduk from the Greece, they come uh, Serbia, then uh, Croatia, and from Croatia again go back to Greece, and from Greece to come to Skopje in Macedonia. And they ask uh, two times 5,000 euro for the some documents how to bring their equipment from the Greece to Macedonia. Like, uh, you need to pay for your equipment, like now you bring your amps from the United States, and I can say to you, if you don't pay me $5,000, you cannot pass the border. So they have to do with many bands, you know. They do once with the Creator, one with Vader, twice with Marduk, and I don't want to count. But now yeah, it's I... okay. From 2015, it's okay. Maybe because uh, we have now with our passport to travel without stopping us, you know. You can travel three months in the whole Europe maybe for that but we also the metalheads have a lot of problems so if you want to make a tour was it's crazy so our first tour where we made was we asked uh, from the owners of the clubs to find uh amplifiers you know we just bring our guitars and uh drummer combos because there is always risk and did you have then a show in Greece or no? Yeah, we played two dates in Greece. We played in Thessaloniki and Athens. And when we went into Greece, it was, I remember, because we it was weird. We played in Romania and Bucharest. And then we <laughs> drove through Bulgaria, obviously, into uh, Greece, played in Thessaloniki, played in Athens, came back and went to Sofia. And I remember when we went into Bulgaria, we had some problems where there was some paperwork that needed to be presented when we were telling them that we were going to play, I remember that when we crossed back through the other side, like, because we went through it, came back after Greece. And there were a couple of times, like, I remember too, when we were at the border, like, they told us to keep our phones in our pockets. Like, they did, like, it was, it was weird, man. Like, they were uh, definitely more, uh, more stringent or more, ex more aggressive as we left going from Greece into yes, Austria. That, that it's uh, till now. So I think, well, I don't know what to say. Maybe maybe the problem is because it's too much too much hate and anger in the Balkans, because there was multiple wars, you know, uh, in the World War One, World War Two, the Balkans War, the war between Greece and Macedonia, the war between Greece and Bulgaria, and different uh, Serbian and Bulgaria. And I think uh, that will never disappear. You know, that will be 
forever. Well, I remember when I was a kid watching the news and like Bosnia and all that stuff too. Like, in- yeah, the Bosnia, the Bosnia was the the most danger country. Actually, the most dead people it's come from there. I know this because my father was a sniper guy in that time, so uh, he he served for Yugoslavia, and also they. There was in many missions. He don't want to say nothing for that, and you will never know he's die because this this year he died. And he said the world, the worst stuff is this world is to kill your brother on the battlefield. He was his explanation for that war, uh, because uh, when the Yugoslavia uh, it's start to fall. There was a war in the whole Balkans country between each other, you know. Only only we survive that shit Macedonians, we don't go in the war. I don't know how, but after three or five years, we have that war back. Actually, I can be uh, 1991, yeah, after 10 years. Because the war between Serbia and Croatia was long, long time. Not exactly how much, but two or three years, no idea. But we have the problem with the Muslim people after that. But everything was politics. So you cannot say you're the bad guy or he's the bad guy. In one moment, you know, the Balkans was like minefield. You step and when we went through, maybe, I- maybe from that time. There is a still hate and fear. So maybe we are the only one band where we play in the Muslim countries in the Kosovo, you know. Uh nobody wants to kill day to play there. And I decide, okay, I will cross the ice. And my father say, uh I can say this, or you don't have brain or you have iron balls i say maybe i have both no idea and to be honest we go to play there and everybody start on the same border you know uh you go in the muslim countries where you know that music is not allowed (laughs) and they start to what is this? What is this? And we say we go to play in the Pristina, the capital city, in the, all the center. And they say, "Are you sure it's Kosovo?" I say yes, and I show you now from the Facebook. And the guy asked me, "I think you're kidding with me. We don't have the type of music. You know, we we uh, decapitate that that guy where he plays." I say, "Yeah, but we're." So there is, and I found the document, you know, really, we have that music. And the guy start call him in the Pristina to, to find a way, is it true or we do something, you know, and they call him back and we go. And to be honest, when we go inside, I have seen, I can make a example like Bronx in New York because I have friends there. Also, I have my friend from the kids when was he showed me on the camera you know in bronx you can see from the multi billiards to the bronx you know the ghetto and stuff so that country was in that mood you know we passed about so poor stuff and when we go in the capital city i can say the capital city was better than sofia bucharest thessaloniki or First time in my life I see the buildings where I haven't seen in my life, you know. And this is uh, 2013. And then they have euro. They paid us in euro. So the first money I take from the metal, it was from the fossil. And also I have friends till this day, you know, we are very close. We love each other. We respect each other. And uh, I can, I I need to tell you how I met them. In Macedonia, uh, I do the show Vital Remains, Small and Creation, and Christian, 2011. 
I was one of the organization, actually. And uh, I was outside and there was a 30, 40 people, something like that, where they speak the language, of course, I don't understand. But, you know, you can see when someone is mad, pissed off. And so you don't need to know that language, but you just know something is not right. And I just go, I say, okay, excuse me, do you speak English? And they say, yeah, fuck you, leave us alone, you know. Macedonian bastards, I say, wait, 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 one second, what's happened? What's happened? We come from the Kosovo and you don't uh, bring us to the show inside because we're Albanians, you know, we're Muslims. And I say to them, who say that? The guy who sell the tickets and I say, really? They say, really, I say, give me the money. And he said, how you mean give, to give you? How much tickets you want? And I think it was between 30 or 35 tickets, something like that. And I just go, and I take money. Oh, I buy 35 tickets and I give them. And there was a problem. The guy who do the show don't want to send him. What do you know? They're this type of people. They're inside. will be war. They will kill each other. And I say, shut the fuck up. They are metalhead. It doesn't matter if they're Muslims or Buddha or Hindu. They come 200 kilometers far and you leave them outside. And okay, somehow they live inside. You know? And from that day to till now, because in Kosovo it's not metal, every band who come in Macedonia, they come. So to this day, they are one of the guy or the group who always bring 30 40 last time there has 100 people to behemoth you know and macedonian metalheads was only 60. and i say if that 100 people don't come how much money you will have you have right man i will be bankrupt so so this is it so this is the way where you live bro that's that's insane and i mean yeah like you're like you're saying music is a unifying thing metal is about unification and it's not not discriminatory and it just uh goes to show how fortunate we are that uh you know that that those boundaries don't don't exist on that scale in in uh you know in uh america or in other places in the world like in your you know western europe and stuff like that because it was different it is different in the balkans i mean i said that before but and i don't have nearly i mean you're telling us and i appreciate you telling us all about that stuff man and because it makes me feel you know uh gratitude that things aren't that way where i am you know where i've been so i mean you know we're in america we have it pretty pretty fortunate you know what i mean and yeah it's, uh the to share opinion with uh people from different countries you know it's uh really nice because i uh three years ago so you know the guy where you do the interview with pure metal of gods then yes that, right uh so he i found him and i was also the the band we need to go you know when they rip off him uh for the netflix so also behind him i meet a lot of people who was uh, assholes and really good friends so i meet people from colombia where they told me you know stuffs where you can stay shocked you know people from mexico and at the end of the day you can learn one thing everybody leave for the party for the for the shows for the gig or so we we are like how to say we are sad people here in the balkans because uh there is a many factors it's not only the money the people can say yeah i don't have money i'm sad so okay you so what if you have millions and you go die you're sick it's not always the money factor but here it's always something uh more than that you know because uh, the people are sad uh i don't have this i don't have that i i don't have wife so the people here are a uh, little confusing so 
if you don't have nothing and now okay it's the end of the world and so what we wait to take my axe from behind and i decapitate myself so if you don't have try find a way to have it so uh, how you mean i mean because 20 years ago i cannot afford one package of strings to change of my no-name guitar now i have full package with thousands of strings you know i have instruments so you need to start find a way how to work to get money so if you're set you need to find what is the reason to be set and fix it and be happy so it's it's logic it's uh, our part of way but the people i don't know how to explain that they are so sad they are so you know and this is this is what is it so i'm happy to find a lot of people so i'm happy to have as a brother friend it's small so i hate i i i want one day as we speak if we become better or big little bigger start making money so i love to have tour with you man because to have that type of piece of guitar like you it's something where i don't know how to explain to have a uh, treasure in your home well i appreciate it dude and uh let's talk about the uh the uh the slave pit single that you guys put out and uh, that was a great song and you also have another song that you want to release a teaser for tell us about that dude we work now of the part two of the album so uh actually the album will be with part three so uh we change a lot because you know these two years i was uh deadly sick how to say and uh I survived all the shits. I still have some problems, but I think to the summer I will be as a horse. But I do one stuff where I don't do and I'm a little disappointed. That is I lied three and a half years in a row for this album. First, I have problem with the COVID, you know. Then uh, the problem was I need to go back in Macedonia. So we need to separate with Cameron again. And then, you know, the depression hits me so hard. So the first time in my life I say, okay, this is it. I will, I'm done with music. Because the first producer, you know, he fucked up us. He made not album, but a evil demo. Because that sound of the first album, I don't like it. And then... Uh, all the money i have spent for the cds like uh 1000 cds uh, 500 shirts i give everything as a gift to everybody on the two tours i don't take any penny you know and then i decide to go back with common we speak so you're 20 years in the sheets no sense to stop and then we decide to make this album and uh torturing the betrayers the first song where we do first video was the old song we have played that song six years in a row but we never record that song you know and we decide to start with that song and the tomb of pain the tomb of pain it's now in progress uh i think coming it's nearly the end with the drums and then you know all the progress new guitars and we release five days ago when we put our spotify and that stuff we released our song evil church where i sing to you where it sounds like slayer on steroids you know for the first time i sing so fast like rap in the metal music for me was not easy but it's somehow i expect people to say mm, you know this is not so good but the interesting fact is everybody saying man this is fucking great and cool nice dude well sasha i really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me dude is there anything that you want to say before we wrap it up oh uh, be that what you are love you all respect you all play the music love the people and this is it i want to make one 
green screen. We have it. Yeah. So right this on. is it, brother. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity because to be in your podcast with the people as James Murphy and uh, so many faces behind. For me, it's something amazing, you know. Well, I, I usually, appreciate, I appreciate I usually you somehow I grew up, you know, to make interviews, maybe because I work as a journalist, you know, with my media and somehow I think I always think I'm, you know, somehow bad. But now it's I understand everything is good. So love you from the bottom of my heart. Likewise, likewise, dude. I'm super appreciative, man. Thank you, dude. And it's nice to finally get to talk to you, dude. And uh, you know, we'll make it a regular thing. And I really appreciate you taking the time, dude, to talk about, you know, like your life and how in your in your experiences like that, not just about the music, but yeah, just the life everything. the life hits me hard in the past 15 years, but really hard, you know, when you stay on the train and the train trailways and the train will hit you so fucking hard and you just go <laughs> but this is what is it we are metal has so i can say again for the overkill i'll say bobby blitz we are the bastard union bastard nation so absolutely love you, matt. Love Guys, you too, man. matt is the guy matt is the meat matt is the gut shredder and follow him his project matt miller you were never disappointed and if you want to play so fast you can learn by him so cheers love buddy you, brother. love you too man have a good one dude yeah cheers